Welcome back to the Crypto Labs YouTube channel. We're going to talk about liquidity pools versus concentrated liquidity pools. Talk about the ins, the outs, the risks, how it works. We're going to look at Uniswap. And we're going to look at Pancake Swap. We're going to look at Aperture. And we're going to look at a few different platforms. And ultimately, talk about how it all works because I think people have it misunderstood. And they're still thinking in terms of daily ROI type dabs. How much can I make per day? We got to stop thinking daily and we got to start thinking monthly. What are our monthly and yearly returns and thinking much more long term? So we'll talk about strategy. We're going to talk about a lot in this video. If you want more on concentrated liquidity pools, things like impermanent loss, different strategies, correlated pairs, what to do in a bullish market, what to do in a bearish market, what to do in a sideways market, how can you outpace impermanent loss? I'll leave that up to you. If you do want to see more videos like this, if this kind of stuff interests you, if getting out of the DGEN stuff and getting out of the gambling and becoming an investor and building a bull run bag and really strategically designing a DeFi portfolio that not only makes you daily income, but you can multiply that income in the upcoming bull run, then do let me know in the comments. If these videos get very little engagement, then I know people just don't care. They don't want it. I'll keep making money. Our community will keep making money and we'll let y'all keep playing the ROI dance. But if you want to see more stuff like this, do let me know. Now, I want to make it really clear. I had two links sent to me this morning. Uh, Investium Capital. Don't care if I have to log in and create an account and give someone money to give me a percent per day. I don't care. This is not an investment. Someone sent me Kiopi and I, I've already covered this. Like I don't care. Because I can make an income in true DeFi. I don't have to touch this stuff. Now, will this stuff pay? Yeah, it'll pay until it doesn't pay. It'll pay until it runs. And it's so interesting to me how we have just normalized this whole, I hope it doesn't rug. And we're still giving them money. At this point, this is going to sound harsh, but like you literally deserve to get rugged. We now know better. and There's better opportunities. So let's talk about it. Now, I do want to bring us back just to the overall strategy. Remember, we are deploying capital into different pools, into potentially different projects, into different opportunities. We're earning a yield. We're making a decision whether we want to reinvest some of that into our business to grow the income, or we want to take it and invest it into our fund. That's just the way I like to think about it. So that fund can grow in the upcoming bull run. And that fund is typically not making us an income unless it's low risk staking or it's liquid staking or it's very low risk yield farming. Like there's opportunities to earn a bit of an income, but I do see this as a business. So all the pools, all the Uniswap stuff, all the pancake swap, all the level two, level three plays, I'll share that in a second. They're here. And then I have a bull run bag and I'm taking some of the income. Like let's just say on Uniswap, I've got not a ton, but I've got a couple grand of liquidity in the ARB USDC pool. I got $160 of unclaimed fees, $81 in USDC, and about $81 worth of ARB. I take that ARB and I move it into my bull run. So I started with X amount of ARB every week. I take my ARB out of here and I move it into the bull run. And this USDC, I split it back up and I can compound it back in. That's just how I play it. So I'm kind of on a 50-50 here. The ARB, I move for the bull run because I see a 10, 15, 20x potential with ARB. I'm in a Radiant pool. I'm in a Bitcoin pool. I'm in a BNB pool. I'm in an AVAX pool. All of this is printing me more AVAX, BNB, Bitcoin. It's printing me more. Now, that said, we want to also look at if you're inside the UIG or if you hear me talk about different levels of plays, level one is just full range liquidity pools. That's the stuff we learn on. Level two is concentrated liquidity pools. Level three are, we'll call them yield aggregators or optimizers or things that maybe help you auto rebalance your liquidity pools. And there's another level of risk, but the rewards can be greater. Level four are newer DEXs or newer projects and newer pools by trusted teams. And level five is like the highest risk, brand new player in the game. They're audited, but they're brand new, very high risk. And it says high risk as we'll go in true DeFi. Everything after that is a gamble degen play. So if you are in the UIG, just remember here in the six figure DeFi earner challenge, go to your DeFi missions 
And we've got, we understanding the five levels of risks in D5 course. Quest one, three bucks, hundred dollars per month. We want everyone here very quickly. This is full range liquidity or very safe concentrated liquidity pools. And we break down all our different strategies. So do not skip this. Even if you're experienced, do not skip this level two. We start getting into concentrated liquidity pools, start looking at TA, start joining practice pools and deploying capital in one or two concentrated liquidity pools. Level three, we talk about setting tighter ranges, and I'll talk about this in a sec. So setting tighter ranges, what that means, how to really start thinking about what kind of ranges or what kind of range would I like to set. And then we expand our portfolio with tighter ranges, higher returns. So now we're really building a business. Quest four, we're really starting to get into level three plays. So optimizers and vaults and aggregators and adding a few more projects to our portfolio. But now we know our portfolio is based on solid foundations. Then we move into the $3,000 per mark. I think we have two or three NFTs this week that people requested for it. We start talking about correlated pairs. We start talking about more advanced strategies on how to really optimize our DeFi portfolio. And of course, we can keep going. Quest 6 comes out this Friday. Looking forward to it. Uh, we really take our TA skills to a whole new level. And we really start talking about taking profit. It really starts turning into a business. And by this point, if you've even been playing with DGEN stuff, you're probably not going to be interested in DGEN stuff anymore because you'll be amazed at the returns you could make. Now, we need to explain this very simple idea of liquidity pools versus concentrated liquidity pools. You can think of a liquidity pool like you're providing liquidity into, let's just use ETH and USDC, and it's full range. So Ethereum being $0 all the way to infinity. Ethereum could be worth $30,000, $40,000, $50,000, $60,000. You'd still be providing liquidity. The problem is it's not a very efficient use of capital. All the market makers, all the liquidity pools, all the liquidity providers, they're providing liquidity across the full range, yet all of that capital isn't being used. It's only being used in a fairly tight range. There's algorithms and there's a very complex mathematics behind that. But I think the concept is pretty simple. People aren't trading Ethereum at $3. And so it's wasted capital. And it, it's a little more advanced than that because it's not, there's some algorithms at play that kind of, there is a curve to it. But anyways, with concentrated liquidity, you're saying, I want to provide liquidity between Ethereum being 1800 and 2800 and you'll get higher returns because you're making more of the fees. You are the bank, but you're making more of the fees. So you're providing liquidity in a more concentrated range. And so you get more of the fees. Now, the more tighter the range gets, the more your capital is going to be used and the more fees you make. It's that simple. Now, what if you set your ranges too tight? Well, you can go out of range very quickly and be converted all into ETH or all into USDC, depending on what way the pendulum swings. Now, is that necessarily a bad thing? That's for you to decide on your strategy. If I'm a long-term holder of ARB, I don't care if it fluctuates. As you can see, my ARB right now, I'm holding 87% of the liquidity I provided is right now in ARB. 368 is in USDC. I don't care where it hangs out in that range because I'm holding ARB for the long term. And as I make ARB, I store this stuff. Now, if the bull run came or if it was a very green market, I would, I'd want to be in a more correlated pair. If the markets are kind of bearish still or they're sideways, which in my mind they are, I don't mind being linked to a stable coin. I don't mind if the price of ARB goes down a little bit because I'd be holding it anyway, but instead of just holding it, now I'm earning. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments below. So we're going to use PancakeSwap on the Binance Smart Chain as a quick little example here of liquidity pools like V2s versus concentrated liquidity pools. So I'm going to go over to Cake b and I'm going to go add liquidity. There we go. If I go full range, as you can see, I can make 3.14%. Now, it's not always hyper accurate because it's going, It's that's based upon data that PancakeSwap can pull. And PancakeSwap, as of right now, doesn't have a tremendous amount of data, but let's just use this as an example. It provide, if I provide liquidity pool from $0 all the way to basically infinity of whatever Cake and BNB could be worth, I can make 3.14%. Not really life changing, you know, wouldn't, doesn't change my life. What if I go 50% down, 50, 100% up, massive range, like a massive range. This ain't going out of range anytime soon. I just went from 3% to 10%. That's a 3x. What if I went a little bit tighter? 
30%. Now I'm making Wall Street look like freaking chumps. What if I went really tight, which depending on what kind of assets you're in, this would be considered much tighter for cake and B&B, especially because of the cake. But there's some more stable assets where I'm like 5 and 5%, 5%, 8 and 8%, especially when things are moving sideways. Or if I think things are going to drop a little bit, I'm like minus 10, 3%. And some of these things, we're doing 180, 200, 220%. And when you start realizing how much you can make as a market maker providing liquidity while knowing the risks of impermanent loss and understanding the difference between correlated pairs, non-correlated pairs, stable assets, et cetera, et cetera, you can, like, you can make a lot of money and you could take that cake and that B&B &B you're earning just for this example, of course, and be building your bull run bag with it, which brings me back to this diagram. And again, let me know if this is making sense in the comments. And if you want more stuff like this, let me know. I love this space because to me, this is true investing and it, you can be strategic with it and you can take on as much risk as you want or as little risk as you want. You can be as hands-on or as passive. But now we've got pools. We've got RBUSDC. We got, let's just say, Cake and BNB. &B. We've got ETH pools. We've got AVAX pools. We've got Matic pools. And I can make the decision what range do I want to set? So, how active or how passive am I? How much am I reinvesting or am I moving it all into the bull run bag? And if I'm in something that I don't want to hold, but it's just earning me a massive return, so I'm level four, level five plays, becoming a yield farmer, I can just convert my earnings into Bitcoin. Then I can hold my Bitcoin for the bull run, which is exactly what I do. And that's how I've been able to build a bigger and bigger bull run. And I know that every couple thousand dollars I put in my bull run, it's most likely not a thousand, but it's going to be 10,000 or $25,000, depending what I'm investing in. This is how you make money without trading your time for it. Everyone always wants to know the secret of like, how do you make money? It's like, well, you become an investor. And you find the highest yielding instruments, investments, opportunities you can. So you can turn, you turned your time into dollars. And now you're turning your dollars into more dollars. And this is it. I have, I have yet to find an opportunity that pays me as much as DeFi has paid me. And if strategically done, you can avoid all the rug pulls. You can avoid all this crap, this Quiopi stuff, this investium capital. You can get into, I mean, it's even Seoul and USDC. There's some pools out there. This is a major DEX on a, well, major DEX, a major project on Seoul. That's a 72%. I'm earning Seoul somewhere else, but I was looking at this. I'm like, I'll probably move my Seoul over here. Or here I'm sitting on like $87 and 0.1 ETH returns in an ETH USDT pool that was like a hundred and something percent because there was so much activity on it. And so I earned a ton. And now I can go take that, which I'll take after this recording. I'll go use it somewhere. This is true DeFi. This is the stuff you control. You don't have to be at the whims. You can set your ranges. You don't have to be at the whims of anybody, especially if you're hanging on or hanging out on the bigger DEXs. The big pancake swaps, the Trader Joe's, the Uniswaps. And there's tools that can help you even auto compound this stuff, auto manage it. Pancake is rolling out with it. Trader Joe is rolling out with it. There's tools built upon Uniswap that can help you. There's strat. You can probably, every time you think you have this figured out, there's another level to it. And that excites me because there's another level of earning. There's another level of mastery. There's always something to learn. And this space fascinates me at how fast it's moving and how many people are still sleeping on it. So that's that. I hope it was helpful. If it was, do let me know in the comments below. And what I'll do is I'll move my mug in the middle. And I'll leave some more educational content I hear and here and here and here. Do check it out. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. Like this video and come do check out the UIG if you feel so called. Come join the Six Figure DeFi Challenge. Uh, right now, Colin is actually going live with some crypto DeFi education. If you know nothing about crypto and DeFi or very little, we also have an educational portal, as you can see. And obviously, we, the instructors, uh, we go live and we teach and we coach and we support, whether that's in crypto DeFi, whether that's in technical analysis, whether that's in the DeFi earner challenge, whether that's in the true DeFi investor group, the bull run investor group, the community deal flow. I don't care where it's at. We got your back. So do come check it out if you feel so called. And with that said, we'll talk soon. Peace.